Pros vs. Joes was used as a test of the average man versus the elite level athlete. Hey, save it, save it for the game. Jesse, come on. You right? Yeah. All right. The chance to prove that these pros bleed just the same as us. An appraisal of skill, sometimes. Sometimes it was just a weird ass collection of props found sitting around an arena or Rube Goldberg machines that they built. In layman's terms, at least like 28% of the events were just BS to fill in runtime like a YouTuber trying to get to 10 minutes. I wanted to look at some of the more bizarre events today. Let's start off with my favorite category, basketball if AI tried to come up with new rules. Artificial intelligence, not Allen Iverson. For some reason, Spike TV really loved having them do shooting challenges where they give everyone motion sickness. The first example comes in the first episode where they have the Joes face Dennis Rodman in a treadmill free throw shooting contest. Not only is this ridiculous, apparently it was a hazard because Dennis Rodman managed to get a gash on his hand. <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it, having a bunch of basketballs rolling at you while you're running on a treadmill sounds like a TikTok challenge. Who the hell thought of this? The next basketball variant involves Xavier McDaniel and a rising basketball rim. It's pretty easy to understand. The hoop goes from regulation 10 feet up to 25 feet in the air, like you need to score over a giraffe or Victor Wimbanyana. This one is a lot closer to an arm exercise than actual basketball. Ah, ah. The second person definitely gets an advantage because I know X-Man's deltoids were on fire. The last cursed basketball challenge I would like to talk about is when they had Muggsy Bogues playing rotational three-point shoot-around. Pun entirely intended, I guess. This one makes the least sense to me because this is an opportunity to show that physical prowess doesn't decide a hooper. Skill does. Instead, we have this man Muggsy Bogues destroying his equilibrium, shooting sideways like a movie gangbanger. Not only that, but why is there a random rack sitting in the middle as a tripping hazard? Was OSHA not around in 2007? That's definitely a place where you need some yellow tape with black stripes. I guess out of the three, the rising rim was the least ridiculous because it had the least amount of a chance to not see a basketball underneath you and just eat shit. Next, let's talk about completely irrelevant recreation. Events that have legit nothing to do with the sport they play. Spike TV would do this thing where they try to even the playing fields by making everybody do something they've never done before. For example, here's Bill Romanowski on a pleasant bicycle ride around the course. And so much for evening the playing field because one of the Joes goes against Bill Romanowski like they're the IRS, while another Joe goes against Decathliner, the Cathleter, the Cathlete, the guy who does 10 sports at the Olympics, whatever it's supposed to be called. I'm sure this 185 pound Olympian can ride a bike better than this 245 pound Guard Lambert face as Bill Romanowski. Speaking of Olympians going against retired athletes, here we have Justin Gadlin and Dominique Wilkins just lifting weights. A cumulative effort to see who can lift the most weights in 10 minutes. Dominique is like 50 here and risking pulling a muscle, doing all this work it out with zero break in between. This one is really just lifting some weights, so it's pretty universal at least. Let's talk about a sport that probably nobody on the show did, and that's skeet shooting. They have Dan O'Brien and Muggsy Bogues and some more bull. Bo Jackson is also here, and out of everyone, he hits the most skeet. I refuse to do the five seconds of research here and will be exclusively calling them skeets for the rest of my life. It's skeet shooting, so you have to be shooting skeet. I'm starting to sound like a rapper in the crunk era. Listen, I'm pregnant. Ah, skeet, 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 skeet. Bo Jackson ends up shooting the most by hitting a skeet, skeet, skeet. Out of the 30 shots, they collectively hit eight. I said skeet more times in this segment than they hit shots. I don't know if I'm more disappointed in them or me. Let's talk about one more category of bizarre business. When they would get the challenge half right. Now, if I told you Roy Jones Jr. was on two separate episodes, you would probably expect him to, I don't know, box on both episodes. What if I told you they had this man out here playing basketball with Tim Hardaway Sr. And before y'all start commenting, I too remember the Roy Jones Jr. MTV Cribs episode where he had a regulation sized basketball court in his house. What I also remember is Roy Jones Jr. was in a rap group with Bone Crusher called the Body Head Bang. 
Just because you like doing something does not make you a lead at it. Roy Jones hoops like someone who everyone knows has hands, so they refuse to go at him. Roy Jones makes exactly three jump shots, and his basketball spirit animal is D.L. Hughley in The Brothers. He has a decent layup package, but his defense and shooting just ain't it. Luckily, his teammate is Tim Hardaway Sr., so they end up cooking everyone regardless. The whole show was just entirely ridiculous, and I could probably do three more of these, so let me know if y'all want to see another one.